I'm here to be honest with you and to tell you the truth. Now, just like in Morpheus, you've got the red pill, the blue pill, and it's not always the most pleasant experience to take that of the red pill because the red pill represents the truth, and sometimes the truth is a little bit of a bitter pill to swallow, but what you've been fed in the past has been the blue pill. The past has been, it's you raise your vibration, it's gonna be sunshine, roses, daisies, tulips, it's gonna be just all high vibration, pleasant experiences, but I'm here to tell you that that's maybe very comfortable to believe, but it's not actually completely true. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you some kind of inconvenient, you could say that these aren't convenient, these are inconvenient truths on you raising your vibration, what that realistically looks like, and why this will save you so much time and energy in the process. Welcome back to another video. My name is Aaron, and I help people expand their consciousness. Now in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you the seven inconvenient truths on raising your vibration, some of which not everybody talks about because it's not all the, the, the sunshine roses and daisies and stuff. Now one of the first ones is one of the ones that you'll probably recognize one of the quickest when you start raising your vibe. So when you raise your vibe, what that means is there's stuff that used to resonate with you that may no longer resonate with you. Basically, you know, for me, when I raised my vibration, I went from drinking, smoking a lot of weed, and uh, taking Adderall during the day. I did not feel good about myself. I had a low sense of self-worth. I was still processing the trauma of a painful past uh, from childhood. And what happened was I felt resistance and I felt stuck. But then what happened is I went through what is called a spiritual awakening. Spiritual awakening is where you become aware that there's more to life than necessarily just the ego mind, that the reality you used to live in is a sort of box, and when you start breaking out of that box, you start realizing that there's more, and then you start questioning everything that was in the box. So for me, that was the ADHD, the nine to five job, was um, the painful past. And as I started to question things, and I started to also realize the correlation between what I was thinking to what I was feeling to what I was experiencing, I then realized that if I would change where I was putting my energy, I changed the kind of effects I was getting in my reality. So that was a part of the spiritual awakening process. I also, at that same time, learned meditation. And when I did that, I remember that it changed my energy so dramatically that people wondered what the hell happened to Aaron. That's pretty much what happened. I was working at Nordstrom's in women's shoes. I start raising my vibration. I start meditating and I start becoming interested in stuff I was never interested in before. Within a couple weeks, I quit smoking weed. I quit drinking alcohol. I quit taking Adderall. I started meditating. I immediately at that time went vegan. And when I went vegan, I, uh, I started losing a lot of weight. And what happened is people thought, you know, I was on drugs or something. They didn't understand what was happening. Now, of course I was on nothing and I was even, I was, if anything, the most like sober I've ever been in my life, but people didn't understand it. So what happened is friends and family were concerned about me. They didn't understand it. And one of the inconvenient truths about going through a spiritual awakening is that you may lose friends for a period of time, or you may distance yourself or find that you don't resonate with the things you used to resonate with. I remember I actually felt pretty guilty about this. I felt like you know, I need to like try to resonate with old friends, with old activities that I used to do. And I remember I would go and I would like, you know, I quit smoking, but then I would every now and then I would try it again because I just wanted to relate to friends. And um, I remember that I became, I started to feel pretty lonely, to be honest. I started, feel, I felt like my dad didn't understand me. Uh, people started labeling me and just put me in this category as like, I'm just, you know, crazy or something like that. But then what happened is, um, it also was partially my own fault though. I became super ungrounded. I became like, like super 5D fairyland grounded to where like, I didn't want to have a nine to five job. I didn't want to deal with anything that was considered 3D. And I honestly, I started feeling separate from other people. And that was because as much as I felt judged by other people, I was then judging other people. I'd be like, well, they don't understand me because they're not as woke as I am. And that would then cause me to feel separation. But then I broke out of that. One of the ways you break out of this is you become aware of that, of the judgments that you have and you have to let go of that separation. You have to start realizing that even though the old people that you used to resonate with don't resonate with you with you as much any longer, you have to resonate. This is just a part of a process. And you have to let go of that belief. I developed a belief that said people don't get me. 
that there aren't that many people out there like me. And that belief literally blocked people from coming into my life that would actually resonate with me at a deep level. So one of the th main things you'll want to do is become aware of that one. And if you feel like uh, you, know, you don't have a tribe, if you feel like this is something that's a very big problem is people go through a spiritual awakening and they feel like uh, people don't get them. One thing I'm doing right now is I'm making an app for connecting people all over the world that are of a similar vibration. And if you want to sign up to get early access to that or to be notified of that, click the link in the top of the description box. Um, it's being made right now. It'll be ready like a month or two, so it depends on when this video comes out. But sign up. You'll see the link there. And um, yeah, you can sign up and we're going to be doing, there'll be a lot that goes on in there. It'll be a way of connecting people all over the world. You'll be able to see people in your city. Uh, also, it'll just be a very high vibe container. And there'll also be lives, you know, live events and stuff like that. It'll be very exciting. But anyways, that's the first inconvenient truth. Now, the second one is imagine when you go outside, like, let me introduce you to someone. You think that when it's all light, it's all light. It looked like an ascended avatar. <laughs> let me wait for it to, okay, eventually it will, it will adjust eventually. But I don't know if you can see this right here. Where is it? Maybe I've ascended. Okay. Is that my shadow? There we go. That shadow right there. That right there is a shadow. And a big part of raising your vibration is shadow work. Shadow work. It's an inconvenient truth because a lot of people think that it's all just sunshine, roses, and daisies. Now, shadow work is where you become aware of the unconscious parts of you. And the unconscious parts of you are the parts of you that kind of lay under the surface. Now, for me, what this looked like is that this last year, I was shedding an old pattern I had of being a people pleaser. And that is a shadow. Being a people pleaser is a shadow because what that's saying is I'm going to give and uh, I'm going to be nice to you and do what you want to do so that you will give me validation, love, and support. And the thing with this is sometimes it's uncomfortable to go into the shadow. It's uncomfortable to look at why am I this way when I realized that my ex-stepmom was very uh, abusive mentally, physically, emotionally. That, in a way, caused me to think I wasn't worthy and that I had to be a different way in order to gain love, support, and validation. So what ended up happening is I became aware of this, and then I had to do different things where um, I had to go into meditation. I had to literally feel a lot of the energy of, uh, of my past, the memories I had, and I had to become aware of them and then shine light on that. And it's kind of a harsh truth sometimes to re- introduce something that happened in the past, but it is so necessary on this process. So sometimes leaning into the shadow, a lot of times leaning into the shadow is one of the most important parts of raising your vibration. It's becoming aware of these unconscious patterns that, that uh, stay active in your life. And if you don't look into the shadow, it will continue to run you. It's funny, not funny, it was actually not funny at all, but after my ex-stepmom left my life when 15, 16 years old came around, my dad finally divorced her. I then attracted an ex-girlfriend in my life that was very controlling, just like my ex-stepmom. I broke up with that chick after a f four or five years, three or four years too long, just like my dad stayed in a relationship too long, another pattern, another shadow. Then I was working at Nordstrom's and Women's Shoes. I got transferred to Salon Shoes, which is designer shoes. The manager of that department was the same exact personality as my ex-stepmom, very controlling. There was always someone in my life to control me because that felt safe and comfortable. It was a form of trauma bond. And until I became aware of it, it was active in my vibration. It was active in my life. Now, part of raising my vibration was becoming aware of that. And that leads me to the third one, which the third inconvenient truth. Now, the third inconvenient truth about raising your vibration is that meditation is one of the most powerful things you could be doing. And what that does is it helps you observe your thoughts. When you observe your thoughts, you're not identifying with your thoughts and they're not being attached to you. So that's why sometimes it's inconvenient because a lot of people don't want to meditate. But I'll tell you this, if you meditate for five or 10 minutes every morning, for the next two or three weeks, it will completely transform your life. It is not that one meditation changes your life, but when you do it every single day, it compounds over time. So meditation is where you're able to observe your thoughts, not try to control them, and as you observe them, it loses its, its uh, power over you because then you could just see that they're just thoughts. When you used to wake up and think, oh, I'm anxious, what about this, what about that, what about, 
whatever, you realize that all your thoughts are doing is they're just repetitive and they're trying to keep you where you are. That's what your ego does. Your ego just wants to keep you safe and it keeps things on recycle, keeps the thoughts on recycle. When you observe them, you begin to neutralize that energy. So what I do is I start a candle flame for five or 10 minutes a day and what I do is uh, do that in the morning and at night and as I do it neutralizes the energy and it allows me to start my day off in a very powerful way. Now, some people don't like to do meditation. The only reason you don't like to do meditation is because you haven't done it consistently yet. You haven't wired it in yet. I became, in a way, kind of addicted to meditation when I started doing it. So, um, because I started to see the benefits, I started to feel this spaciousness within me. It's almost like we can brainwash ourselves to enjoy different things. We ask ourselves, why do we like certain things in our life? Why am I, why do I like doing this or doing that? A lot of times you want to know why you like doing it? It's because it's familiar. It's because you've done it so consistently before that it feels familiar. Now one of the best things you could do is start to take the habit of meditating for just five or 10 minutes a day. Could be you walking in the park and observing your thoughts. It doesn't have to be some crazy experiential, you know, like you're in the fifth dimension or something like that. Um, but it's like you just being present to the moment, you observing these things. This is where I became aware of, uh, I believed I had ADHD. I believed that the only way to combat that or to get through that was what the doctors told me, which is taking Adderall. I started to rewire it for myself. I started to ground myself in grass. That changed everything. So that was something that was just completely so powerful. Now that brings me to the fourth inconvenient truth of raising your vibration. And that is that sometimes when you start raising your vibe, you start, you know, uh, you start resonating with different content. A lot of times there is this ungroundedness I notice in the spiritual community where people just want to ascend into the fifth dimension. They don't want to be here in the 3D. Now you came here to be in body. You came here to bring 5D here. So when we talk about like all the esoteric, like Pleiadian, all these different dimensions and stuff like that, I think they're super cool. But I don't think it's necessarily as relevant for us to be overly infatuated with them when we are meant to be here. When I became ungrounded back in 2012, one thing that happened is I became ungrounded and I didn't even want to have a, a job. And I was rationalizing it with, this is just too low vibrational for me. And that made me very ungrounded. And what I eventually did is I went back and I worked at Barney's New York for four years, then I went full time on YouTube. But a lot of that was, um, becoming very, being very honest with myself because I was spiritually bypassing going into tension. That's what that really was. I didn't want to have a job. So I was, I was justifying it with, oh, well, having a job is low vibration. Figuring out this whole, okay, there we go. I think that's better. <laughs> so that's another thing to realize is it's about bringing 5D here in body. And as you do that, that's what it's about. It's about being also bringing the energy into your body. I think a lot of us that go through a spiritual awakening, we went through trauma growing up. When we went through trauma, we left our bottom three chakras and went into kind of like a, a, a more heady space where we became super intuitive to everybody. But it's about being aware that the more you bring your energy into your body, the more power you feel, the more empowered you feel. And also the more boundaries you can then set. Now that's why the fifth, are we on the fifth or the sixth thing of raising your vibration? I'm just gonna keep, keep firing them off. The fifth thing about raising your vibration that's the inconvenient truth is that taking action is necessary because we're in a 3D physical reality and even though our thoughts being aligned, our energy being aligned is important, my life and creating my dream life and raising my vibration did not completely transform until I started making daily videos and started going after my passion and started taking action. That wired in a new sense of identity for me too. Before that, I was just trying to manifest by like sitting on the couch, thinking about things. And some people can get results with that. I found that when I am being the identity I prefer to be, that's what changes my reality. And part of being is taking action. So one of the things that some people don't want to hear, and this also leads me to the sixth one I'll be talking about in a sec, is Taking action is so powerful because it changes your identity and it is a part of physical reality. Now the sixth inconvenient truth of raising your vibration is that going through a spiritual initiation is important. Now for a man and a woman, this may be a little bit different for masculine energy and feminine energy. Now for me, that included taking a lot of action changing and kind of going through a warrior's initiation. That required me to start setting boundaries, to start leading in my life, to stop letting people walk on me, just like the whole ex-stepmom situation. And that spiritual initiation um, 
completely transform my life. Now, what does this look like for women? Well, I'm going to be doing a podcast episode on this soon with a friend of mine that knows all about this. If you want me to make that episode, can you like this video and comment below and let me know? And I will expedite that video coming out or that uh, podcast episode coming out on spiritual initiation. But in general, going through a spiritual in initiation is about you bringing your energy into your body, but also being completely honest with yourself with taking action. And, and it's really about cutting the ties to, to the past, cutting the ties to the past self, dying to the past self, Cutting the past to the parents, knowing that a lot of the parents' patterns live in you until you do that. Cutting the past from um, past relationships that may have uh, drained your energy or may, you may have overly identified with and realizing your own sense of self-worth. But these are all things that really change when you go through a spiritual initiation. And sometimes they're not the most pleasurable. They're not the most enjoyable, but they are the most worth it. Now, the seventh uh, spiritual, the seventh raise your vibration truth that's kind of inconvenient is that it's an ongoing process and you'll have never actually made it. When you see enlightened people, you say, oh, they've made it. They're enlightened. It's a state of consciousness that they can move in and out of, but it's, you have that same ability. And what you have to realize is that this is not an end destination where you get there and it's done. There's always more shadow work to look at. There's always more things to look at. Even now, there's many layers of myself that I've been stripping away from the past. Many layers connected to childhood trauma, many layers connected to parents. And as I let go of those layers, I raised my vibration to a completely new level, but there's still even layers beyond that. So it's never like it's always, it's already done and there's nothing else to worry about or to think about or um, to, to process. It is an ongoing process. Are there any other inconvenient truths that you think I missed? Comment below if so. Listen to the whole Ponopono meditation. Watch how it begins to raise your vibration. Let's all commit to this for the next 21 days. Comment I'm in if you're in. And other than that, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace, much love, and namaste.